brand new funk, funk. That dirty, dirty type of funk. Funk. Hey guys, Delby here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing the long-awaited Tech House Like Hot Creations video. I've had so many DMs and comments about this label, it's, um, it's been much requested. So today we're doing it. If you're into electronic music, you're probably familiar with Hot Creations. They've been like one of the biggest labels in the game for a decade now. It's run by Jamie Jones, and over the years, it's been the platform that's launched countless artists' careers. And it's still one of the most influential labels in the game. Personally, I was more of a fan of the stuff they were doing on the label around 2012 or so, but this is still cool and there's some really awesome techniques that are being used in all sorts of genres at the moment, like melodic techno, techno, tech house. Basically, there's a lot of cool stuff in the video that's still probably applicable, even if this is not the core sound you make. So stick around, keep watching. Just quickly, if you like the track that's playing, it's a new one of mine, check out the description for links to go and download or stream it. <laughs> And as always, you can download the project files for this video from Patreon. Patreon is one of the best ways that you can support the channel. And make sure I keep bringing you these videos every week. Now let's jump into Ableton and make some tech house. All right, so here we are inside live, and this is my Hot Creations tech house project. So it's the same track you heard in the intro. So let's just jump in and get things going with this style, like. The first thing that's like really important and that's pretty similar between most of the tracks released on this label is the foundational kind of backbeat. It's actually really, really simple. And then it's kind of augmented with different percussions and stuff over the top. But the really foundational elements are super, super simple and pretty consistent across different tracks. So let's jump in with the kick. It's sampled from a track on Hot Creations. Look up here to a video about how you can sample a kick from any track. So we're just playing a standard 4-4 with this little double kick at the end. Now on this double kick, I've shortened these last two MIDI notes and this one is a little bit lower in velocity. And that's just so we don't get a build up of energy at the end of the bar, which is gonna trigger the limiter on the master. So just adding like a nice roll to the groove. So the next thing I'm going to show you is actually the bass line. It's super simple. We're in the key of E minor. So we're just kind of playing this. And then in each bar, we've just switched up this note here. So this one's down four semitones and a little bit longer. And this one is just playing on the root note and a little bit shorter. Cool. And you can hear that that interacts quite nicely with the kick. It's a very subby bass, but that's mainly happening with the filtering on this EQ and on the synth itself. The only processing I've got is a little bit of saturation and this LFO tool, which is just side chaining it to the kick. So I took off this EQ and that's what's really giving it this kind of subby lowness to it. So it's got a bit more aggression and a bit more bite with this, but most of these tracks have really, really subby basses. So the reason for doing it this way is that we kind of want to have the vibe of that aggression, but then take away those mid-range frequencies. So in the synth, it's very, very simple. We've just got two saw wave oscillators. One's tuned up seven semitones. So without the second oscillator, sounds a lot more tame. So when you hear a sound that's got that kind of aggressive bite to it, it's normally got a second oscillator that's tuned up, often by three or seven semitones. So essentially that's making it a chord. Then we've got a sub here, and I've just added a little bit of tone. Then we've got a very tight filter, a bit of resonance, quite a lot of drive a short release on the amplification envelope. Then we're using this very plucky envelope two to modulate the filter frequency. So without that modulation, you can barely hear it. 
It was a very simple bass, very kind of classic bass pattern for house music. Check out this video if you want to see the five essential bass patterns of underground house and techno. They're kind of like the foundational elements of most bass lines. So then we have this tom drum, just an 808 tom, going through some overdrive, compression, a little bit of EQ, and again, LFO tool to sidechain it. And that sounds like this. So together with the bass, and let's zoom in here and take a look at these mini notes. So you can see they're kind of interacting with one another, which is giving it this kind of call and response type thing. Very cool, very cool. All right, so now we're building up the groove and we'll have a look at the claps. So there's three claps. They're quite dry. I haven't actually put any additional reverb on, which I do in almost every project, but the beats in these tracks tend to be quite tight and quite dry. I do have some reverb going on the whole drum bus, which is just going to this reverb send. This is the preset. And that is just part of my standard template, which you can check out in this video here. So we've got three claps layered up. So those first two are just panned and they're slightly different sounds, but both like tight, snappy drum machine type sounds. So together, we've got this clap, which has got a bit more noise and grit in it and they're sitting straight down the middle. So all of those sounds are different from each other, which makes them good for layering. When you're layering drums, it's always good to find sounds that complement each other. If they're too similar, then it's basically just like turning the volume up, or you can get problems like phasing and that type of thing. So together they sound nice and thick, but still very tight. So this is how our beat's sounding now. Cool. Now, hats, very simple on the hats front. So we've got this 909 hat loop, which is literally just a 909 hat playing on the downbeat then the offbeat. Very simple stuff. That sounds like this. Now you'll notice on the EQ curve, this is quite a bright hat. So the brightness of that hat adds some energy. Then we've got another open hat, which has got a bit more body to it. And that's playing this pattern here. So we're just basically playing the off beats and then we've got some little ghost notes just to add a bit of groove and swing. Cool. And then all I've done is taken this loop, which is, I think, from a disco pack. And then I've added Tantra to it. It's actually frozen. I'll leave this frozen. It's in the project files. If you want to go and grab them from Patreon, there's a link in the description. So if you don't have Tantra, it'll be frozen as audio. If you do have Tantra, just unfreeze it and you can have a look. But I'm using the network preset and I believe it's at 17% wet and I've turned off the delay and the reverb so that it doesn't like ring out but if I show this in browser so that's what the original loop sounded like I've also just tightened the envelope so let me just show you that Tighten the envelope. We just go here. On beats mode, we click this forward arrow with the line. Not sure what that's called. <laughs> and then we can pull this in to make it tighter and snappier. Easy stuff. Great way to put some control on your loops. So with that texture, So 
So very subtle, just helping to fill out the top end really. Now let's have a look at the percussion. Now I kept the percussion pretty simple. Some of these tracks have got a lot more of a Latin house tribal influence. Uh, some of them have a more stripped back, minimal kind of influence in the drums. So that's what I went for here. To be honest, most of these tracks are built up using just layers and top loops and stuff. If you want to get that tribal groove, just try adding a few more percussion loops, chop them up, make them your own. So I've got this percussion loop here, which is from an old pack by Vengeance. Again, I've pulled in the envelope as I was just talking about, and this is really just a kind of layer, a texture. I've done a bit of EQing just to pull out the clap here and bring down the hats a little bit. because I'm really just trying to get that percussion element to it, side chaining it to the kick, and then I put some overdrive just to kind of bring everything up. What I'm doing with the overdrive is I've got the tone turned down and I've got this filter on here because I'm trying to influence this kind of low mid section where the percussion is sitting in the loop. I'm really trying to bring out those frequencies. So before and after, So you can hear it's sitting quite low in the mix. It's in the background and it's just like really filling out the vibe of the drums. Now I've got a couple more prominent kind of groove elements. This rim. So you can hear that's just kind of doing a call and response type of thing almost with itself, with the, within the pattern, going the one, one, two, one, one, two, one. And it's mixed a bit higher than the other percussion loop because I want it to be a bit more of a prominent element. Then I've got this cowbell. This has also got a bit of overdrive on it. And I've also used an echo, which just helps give it a little bit more vibe. Without the echo, it feels a bit drier. So you can see here, I've got it set to ping pong, a little bit of dry wet, filtered out some frequencies, a little bit of feedback, and this is set to 30 second notes. I've also offset the left and right channels a little bit. Oh, there's also a little bit of reverb. So you almost can't really distinguish that that's a delay, but it's just helping them to ring out a little bit more and sound a bit more interesting. So here's the cowbell with the rest of the elements. So you can hear it's interacting with that rim, doing a call and response. Cool stuff. So we have the same thing here at the start of the loop, but with one. So we're always trying to get that kind of call and response with the drum elements. By having this call and response, they add up to more than the sum of their parts, and you can get away with using much less. Now we've got this bongo element, which is playing this pattern. It's kind of like a fill type thing. So there's a number of ways you could achieve that. I've just done it by programming it in MIDI. So this is just kind of used as a fill here. Cool sound. And I've just got a little bit of auto pan on that. And I'm using some delay, but the delay is only happening while the notes are playing. And then at the drop there, the delay gets turned off so that it's not ringing out. So it's just like really affecting a sound while it's happening but I don't want it to be rolling over into the rest of the groove. Because again, we want everything to be quite tight and not washy. If you're familiar with my music, there's a lot more kind of washiness to it. Uh, this, you want it to be very impactful, short staccato percussion, and everything very tight. Let's have a look at this percussion texture. Okay, so this is from a percussion loop. I'll just show you that loop. Show in browser. So there's only one bit that I'm interested in, and it's this little bit here. Just a cool, interesting little addition to the groove. So I'm really not interested in the rest of that percussion. It's just kind of going to add up and be too much, but it's really that kind of background, almost instrumental type sound. So just done a bit of processing, a little bit of saturation, EQ, and sidechain with LFO tool, just to kind of help that sit in the track. 
Now the final element here is this percussion fill, which we introduce in the break. And you can see it's just a hit here from a full loop, show in browser. So I could have just used that, but I've just taken one of those percussion hits and used it to make a fill here. Now, the interesting thing about this is that, see, I put it on triplet grid. If I turn that off, you can see these notes are sitting a bit strange. Right, I'll play this one here. A lot of these tracks have triplet kind of fills or something like that in it. It really gives it like a distinct feel. Because the groove is so rolling and there's always call and response, it really creates this kind of tension and then release when you go back to the groove. All right, so that's all of our groove elements, drums, percussion, bass. Now let's have a look at the vocal. This is probably one of the more detailed aspects to the track. I basically found a loop from Splice. We hit you with that brand new funk. We hit you with that brand new funk. So, I mean, there's all sorts of different types of vocal samples that you could use in one of these tracks. A lot of old hip hop vocals, a lot of like hip house vocals, some old house vocals. And in like the last couple of years, a lot of Latin vocals, which Latin tech house seems to be like a pretty big thing at the moment. So I've used this and just kind of chopped it up. You can see here, I'm just using the, this part here. And then here I'm using this phrase, Let's turn these other ones off. And then I've pitched it down by three semitones. So it now sounds like this. We hit you with that brand new funk. Just gives it a bit more attitude. Because I've pitched it down, it's sounding a bit dull. So I've just added a little bit of EQ here. So without the EQ. We hit you with that brand new funk. We hit you with that brand new funk. It just kind of makes it a bit more audible. Subtle, but it helps. I do have a little bit of sidechain because the timing's not great on it. So it's subtle sidechain, but it just helps it kind of sit with the beat a little bit better. We hit you with that brand new funk. We hit you with that brand new funk. So you really don't want to hear that pumping, but it's just to kind of like help cement it with the beat. So that's kind of like the chorus bits, I guess. Uh, then I've got this stretched box, a phrase from the same longer sample. This is the full thing. So I've got a really kind of throwback sound. Now the way I've achieved that time stretch is I've got it pitched down again to minus three. I've got the warp mode set to texture. So I've set the BPM to 496. This is essentially being slowed down. That's what gives it this choppiness. You can kind of fine tune this to your liking uh, by messing with the grain size. I found this 120 to sound about right, but look, let's turn it up. Turn it down. So that also sounds quite cool at around 50. So that just adds another vibe and it's got this kind of throwback feel. Uh, really cool stuff. This was like something that was used a lot in the early 2000s in like Speed Garage and stuff. And then before that in like Rave and Breakbeat and that kind of thing. It's really a nod to when people were using hardware samplers because they just didn't have the capabilities that modern DAW software has. Like if I just turn this to complex pro mode, we're still playing it at 496 BPM, but it's probably going to sound all right. Ah, I just remembered, I've got the LFO tool set to a gating preset, right? So that's helping to give it the choppiness as well. So turn it off. And if we go back, set it back to texture. So I just felt like the gating helped to really accentuate that kind of graininess. And then I've also got some chorus on that. Tell Chorus Alex, one of my favorite free plugins. Download it. It's great. <laughs> Da 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 da
Cool. So in this Vox delay, I've basically just got this full phrase and I'm just using the funk from the end. Cool. So I'm using this filter here with some automation. So it's just filtered out here and it's playing the full vocal here. Got a little bit of auto pan on that. This is also filtered out on the EQ and then just was automating some delay, but don't need it. So delete automation, not using this either. So delete it. Right. So that's just basically a shot with some delay on it. Just to switch it up, I don't want to have this repeat, this main vocal repeating the whole time, but it gives us an element to use. Now, one of the main things that you will hear is this Vox glitch. So what's going on here? We've just got the same funk sample. There's a lot of automation, but I'll turn off most of it. Okay, so now we're just hearing the sample being played. Let me turn that filter up. What we're doing basically is I've got this rack here, which has an arpeggiator in it. The arpeggiator is set to free mode, which means instead of being synced to the beat, like a 16th, 8th, quarter note, etc., it's just running free based on this millisecond time here. When this is lower, it's repeating very, very quickly. And when it's higher, it's repeating less quickly. And that sounds like this. You will recognize this sound being used a lot. Cool. So then I've got the auto pan. Moving it around the panorama, I'm automating the amount. So it's kind of increasing, decreasing. Then I've got some automation with the low end, which is just helping it to filter out as we get to the drop, which creates more tension. Then this delay. adding a bit more chaos to it and then we've got this easy washout from bass clef which is just adding some kind of effectiness i don't know if that's really a word but it's just kind of adding some delay and reverb and stuff as it builds up the drop here it's washing it out as it says so all of this automation just works to smooth this effect out but also amplify the intensity what I had tried to do with this initially was set up these snapshots here with like different timings and I thought I was going to be able to automate them, but you can't. So when I hit these snapshots, see this is going to jump the time here. I'll just close this, we don't need to see the arpeggiator. You can see the time, right? So... <laughs> So I thought I was going to be able to automate between those, but it didn't really work. I guess you could use those for a live performance. So there are some pretty cool possibilities with them, but the application isn't there for actually automating in your DAW. Hopefully that will be changed because it's pretty cool to be able to jump to those exact values. Okay, so let's just turn all that automation back on and give this a listen. <laughs> Solid. We've got a couple of melodic elements, not too much. So this big rave hit was something from Rave Generator. If you don't know this, it's a free plugin and it's sampled like loads of classic old rave and house kind of hook sounds. I was going to use this before the drop, but it just took up too much space and took away from that glitchy vocal riser thing. We do have some other sounds though. We've got this Hoover, which is also coming from Rave Generator. So this is the MIDI for it. And it sounds like this. Yeah. 
So I noticed that there's like loads of these kind of samples, these old classic house throwback samples, house and rave. I think they're just all over the place at the moment. They're in all sorts of techno and they're in everything. And then I've got another rave generator sample, Witch Doctor. Very classic, very overused. <laughs> A lot of the stuff is very overused, but people are overusing it in Hot Creations tracks. So I chuck some in. It helps to give it that vibe. All right, and there's one more melodic element. So this is the MIDI pattern, just a preset from Drift, where I'm automating the filter cutoff at the end here. So I'm just basically doing, using it like a riser or effects type sound. We hit you with that brand new funk. Very similar to what these like percussion sounds are doing what this bongo sound is doing. Quite similar to what this like vocal glitch thing is doing. Cool. Then I've got a couple of effect sounds. Not much. As I said before, a lot of these tracks are really pretty dry. We've got a riser. It just helps to kind of smooth out these transitions. Quite subtle. We hit you with that brand new funk. And then we've got another riser here in the break, which is a bit more obnoxious, a bit more old school sounding. I've, I noticed that a lot of the risers and things that were being used in these tracks had like pitch bends and were, were a bit in your face. So that's what we've gone for here and it kind of works. Dirty, dirty type of funk. 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 You see, it sounds like quite a natural transition into this vocal glitch. If I just turn solo these together, they're working quite nicely. So if I take that away. Dirty, dirty type of funk. Funk. It's all right, but it sounds a bit choppy. So this just helps to kind of mask that transition. Well, I would say smooth out that transition or accentuate that transition. And then I've just reused part of it here at the drop. Cool. So that's about that. Just something to mention about the arrangement that I've done here. There's a lot happening in very short sequence. So a lot of these things would be more spaced out, but there were quite a few different elements that I wanted to demonstrate. So they've kind of had to be packed into a pretty short arrangement. There's kind of enough in here to do a full, like five and a half minute track, I would say. By spacing these things out, it would give them room to breathe and in space for the groove to do its thing. So as always, you can download the project files for this from Patreon. There's a link in the description. There's this project and loads more projects on there. So go get amongst it. Now let's roll it through from the start.
right, guys, there you go. What do you think? How did I do on the sound? If you like this style of video, then check out this playlist. There's gonna be something in there that you like. Well, that's it for me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.